Hey guys, just wanted to give you an update on my tank now that I am working at Aquarium Zen full time. Uh, just wanted to show you guys this little zebra auto sinkless. I love these guys. They're one of my all time favorite uh, fish. One, they clean up just like a normal auto sinkless. This guy's pretty much full grown, but they just get these awesome patterns on them. You can kind of see from the top. Uh, almost have like a pea puffer pattern on them and they're just beautiful they go great with the uh, with the loaches I have in here with the panda loaches or yo-yo loaches or anything like that uh, this tank has been neglected for a while but it's coming back um, co2's on the way here I come to save the day co2 is on the way but, uh, you know, I had a lot of people come through my shop this week, and the question of the week, other than, what are those tiny toadstools? Uh, those are called hydrocotyl verticillata, like vertical verticillata, and, or verticillata, as the English say. Uh, George Farmer seems to say it that way. He just showed some out in the wild in Florida, actually, in a recent video. But uh, it is kind of awesome in that it looks like it, it stays like this. This is as round as it gets here, and it grows up as tall as, I mean, it'll get up to here, maybe even here. It gets pretty tall and uh, does a nice job of looking like little parasols. Now... Here we have a normal limnophilia, you'd think, but a normal limnophilia looks more like these two here. This is a limnophilia hippodroites, and the difference is that it has a chromosome defect that causes the plant to curl out as a plant, which can make it a bit squirrely to try to tame, but it also turns the leaves out at an angle so as you can see the leaves you see that they kind of all turn out so that the purple side is turned out more which i think is cool so uh the the question of the week though was what can i do to add color to my tank and uh some of the answers uh unfortunately are co2 bound but some aren't so I figured in this video we'd go over the names of some of my favorite plants in my collection that add some color and then I can talk a little bit about uh, what they do, the upkeep, that sort of thing. So just a quick video on that kind of stuff, not going super in depth. So this one, check your state laws, but this is called Hygrophilia Sunset or uh, Hygrophilia polysperma is its official name and it has this beautiful pink ribbing um it, you can see it coming through here in our state you can't buy or sell it legally but you can possess it it is an invasive weed it's like milfoil in that it just clogs up waterways because it grows so easily and this will turn just as bright pink without any of the co2 or anything it's really light that makes that one pink and it grows very quickly now up here we have a ludwigia arcuata uh and this one is uh a red a red one here you get some red out of it it can get very red when you uh get it up towards the top like this guy over here and then the other plants that you may be seeing, this is Rotala Wallachia, and it is a beautiful pink to red, sometimes even a neon orange if you see it in some places, and it is a beautiful plant, very hard to keep uh, without CO2. You can keep it, but usually it loses a lot of its needles, and honestly, so like here's an older piece that I have that's grown out. This is what you will end up with in low-tech tanks, probably, even with good light, would be that. Whereas, at least for me, the tops are still turning uh, pink. But I would need to have more light on this tank to get it all solid uh, pink. Now, here, 
pardon the little algae in the shot. I still need to go through and clean some algae today. But here we've got the uh, Buca Falandra or, or Buche Falandre. Uh, and this is Brownie Ghost. And it is just one of the most beautiful, uh, beautiful plants you can find, I think, in the hobby. It's got these metallic gold and silver and bronze flakes. The, the, the uh, leaves turn like a yellow color and a burgundy color and orange and purple and green all at the same time. It's a very bizarre plant in how it can maintain all those colors at the same time. But that's a great one. Also, just normal limnophilia will have some of this color, even though this is limnophilia uh, hippodroites. Here's a normal limnophilia right here on the ground, this clipping that's kind of growing sideways. Um, also, you can always go for crypts. There are pink crypts, like... Uh, um, Let's see here. There's a uh, pink panther, pink flamingo crypts, and then there's also uh, things like uh, red tiger spiralis and so on and so forth. The other one that I'll show you are these rotalas. So they're not coming off as super dark pink here, but trust me, in to my eye, they have a pink and orange and peach top. And these ones are uh, a very nice form of sunset rotala, also rotala atra or atra hura. I, people say it differently, but it's H apostrophe R A, uh, and it's a very nice plant as well. Uh, here's a little more difficult plant to find. This is Cabamba furcata. Most people are used to Cabamba carolina, querulinius, or um, something along those lines, C Cabamba americanus. This one is found in southern South America, and it grows in cooler water generally, uh, but it can withstand warmer water. It, it grows in about 65 to 72 degree water generally. But the, the ends of this plant also can get very colorful, um, especially these ones I just put in here. And so they'll, they'll develop more and more. You can see when I turn the contrast or the, the light down a bit and the glare off, uh, you can see it take up that, that nice color. Um, in here also we have, you can't see it because the, uh, <laughs> the thing's so bright, but we have crypt cryptokern uh cryptokyrene uh crypt whatever you want to call it I, i'm just playing around today guys uh but crypt nuri which is a really fun one uh like real light and blotchy i'll show you a little bit more downstairs in a moment and then uh the last two i wanted to show you in this tank we've got all their all their uh right i'm gonna have a hard time talking today i'm sorry guys Alternanthera ranicii, or AR for short, and it's red, bright, bright purple, looks unreal from underneath, and then it can be red up top, or it can be more green, depending on how much CO2 you have on it. It's the one covered in algae that the shrimp's eating, uh, and I'm going to be getting to the whole algae problem very soon. Now, over here, if you look in between that leaf from a crypt, crypt had you, what is it, a... Uh, I can't remember which crypt that one is, but this is uh, this is a saffron red bacopa. So a bacopa saffron red. Uh, I don't believe it's a bacopa carolinius. I think it's another uh, species. But regardless, it gets very uh, red in the right conditions. Mostly light. A lot of people want to say that iron is the key to keeping your plants red or purple. Uh, that, that may have a little bit of truth in a low tech tank. In the rest of your tanks though, the rest of the hobby, I would tend to say that actually lowering the nitrogen but having plenty of the other ferts is my preferred method of doing that. So I said there are other crypts that are red. Well, here they are. So this is the cryptocurn uh, Red Tiger Spiralis, Cryptocorn Spiralis, Red Tiger, however you want to say it. 
and it just has a lovely red hue. This light above really gives off a lot of green. But this easy low-tech grower, here's more of the Alterni Renikii uh, growing. Here are some uh, Rotala Mini Butterfly or Rotala Macronda Mini as it's sometimes sold. I got this as a tissue culture from the store, but it will literally stay like this with these golds and greens and some oranges and peaches in the transition zone between bright pink. That one you can grow in lower tech. It will not maintain this same brightness, but it is still an interesting kind of fun plant. Uh, so I, I do like that one uh, still quite a bit. Also, there is some color to be had in other Busa Philandra. These ones uh, haven't been... They haven't been in highlight. They've been off to the side, which is fine for boost, but you really want to blast them with really strong light and CO2 to get their true uh, colors out. These are all different species crammed in here, and you saw that ghost, the brownie ghost, how bright it got. So um, these also can clearly be in a low-tech tank, um, and they can also be in a high, uh, high highlight tank as well with CO2. So that's, uh, that's some more recommendations. Here's another example of that Limnophilia aromatica. Uh, and this is, instead of that Hippodroides that has the purple turn inside out, this is what this one looks like. Uh, and it, it has purple nodules and then purple underside to the leaves or a lavender color with kind of a nice lime green above it. And then there is that Cabamba Furcata that's a little harder to find. Once you find it, though, hold on for dear life and share the trimmings. Now, here we have a Laganandra Meboldi Pink. European Pink is the name because it has more color than, uh, than the American version that goes by the same. Here's a better color. Look at how green everything looks washed out whereas from above we can kind of get more of the true red in there and that dusty kind of uh orange or peach color that's in there but this one is a plant that will grow low tech or high tech but with the highlights you'll get that really beautiful pearlescent uh sparkle to it which is really nice i really love that that's another good one. Here we've got Rotala Pink Vietnam growing up at the top. So that's low tech and you'll see that it grows very laggy. You see how, how far between the leaf uh, splits it is? That is because it's reaching for the, reaching for the sky and uh, it does that on a, in a hurry to the top. Same with this Hygrophila. It's it's got an inch in between each one, but it will grow so fast. It will grow up to, you know, two or three inches a day if you were to give it real sunlight. So that's an interesting one. Another easy low-tech one is uh, Crypt Undulata, or um, I guess there's different, there's Crypt Axelrodi. Um, those are both good that have some, like, brownish maroon colors in them, a little bit of purple. Um, the other one that I recommend is this, it's interesting in that the reddest time of its life is when it's dying, the ends die off, and they have this lovely, it looks like ribbon candy, like old, old school ribbon candy, and it has this beautiful just shimmer to it, um, that is hard to get on film, but it, it looks like that pulled sugar look. Of, of crystals of just this beautiful plant and it can get as red almost as this as the the super <laughs> school bus red it just depends on how old it is and when it died but it will turn very nice colors and before it dies it kind of turns these colors but this is corkscrew valsinaria this is from lucas brett's originally another great one um here we've got uh, the lack of color, which is kind of nice, but this is from Han Aquatics. These are some, this is a larger, uh, this one's Petite Nana, and this one is just, uh, na what, I think it's just a, uh, I think it is just a Nana, Anubius Nana. So, 
this Anubius Nana is considered uh, white, or some people call it pinto, some people call it variegated, some people call it albino. Technically, variegated means that the veins of the plant are showing differently from the white part of the plant, or the green part of the leaves, but uh, this one is actually a true albino in that it has white uh, leaves, which is just, I mean, just beautiful. I, I can't get over how beautiful of a contrasting plant this one can be uh, in the right light, you know. And in fact, I think I'm going to move it over. I think we're going to move it back into this tank as I've had it split off. It's not the prettiest when it's adjusting to water like this one is, but uh, you can see there's kind of holes and then the snails will eat it. Snails are not destroying this for the sake of being sadistic snails. They're doing that just because the plant is already sick. So, yeah, here, this is a variegated variety if you want to get technical because you can still see those veins in there, the green in the veins. And it needs some green, otherwise it's a plant and it, and it operates off of uh, chlorophyll, more like borophyll, and it's not gonna, uh, not gonna happen. It's uh, not gonna happen otherwise. But... As you can see, the contrast of that with some other uh, Anubias or other Bucephalandra, Bus as they say, um, is great. I love it. And it flowers nicely as well. This whole tank, uh, I'm just working on today, rebuilding kind of the, the color contrast that I wanted. All right, we're going to finish this up in just a moment as we walk downstairs but as we're finishing it up i just wanted to tell you guys thank you for watching i hope you're enjoying the channel hope you learn things on the channel ask questions if you want to see different videos about new content and uh you know basically i just i feel so lucky now i'm working in a shop and i'm uh, i'm uh getting to do the youtubes with you guys still uh, if you want to encourage me to keep getting more and more interesting stuff collected, have more money to uh, buy another tank, for instance, so I can breed more wonderful little critters and things like that, uh, I have a Patreon, and that means the world, even a dollar uh, from someone. Just let me know that I'm doing a good job. That's all you, That's all it needs to mean in, in my head. And, uh, you know, instead of paying a big old cable bill... Give a, give a couple bucks to some people that you appreciate, uh, you know, working on YouTube, perhaps. If not, leave me a question, or leave me some comments on, you know, what you'd like to see more of, or what could be better. Definitely, uh, the gimbal that I got helps a lot, but, um, yeah, so... It's been a great growing process. I've learned a lot from you guys. Here we have a Nubius coffifolia. has a beautiful red stem as it grows. And then this was earlier, I was talking about it, but this is Cryptocorn or Cryptocorini, as George Farmer would say, or Oliver Knott. Uh, but it is low tech, no CO2 or anything. I don't put any fertilizers in here. And yet again, it's a nice uh, soft pale pink color. It can grow out in different shapes. Some of the leaves can be green if you don't have the CO2 going. And then we have a Ludwigia repens here, uh, Ludwigia super reds, things like that. Uh, also, you can get Ludwigia uh, rotundifolia or uh, Ludwigia repens in all sorts of reds and interesting colors the last stop is the algae station here is one of those bacopas that i i said to you they get red i said they get red see see uh and there's one getting red also you can see more of that beautiful kabamba furcata back there that pink plant looks great uh we've got more of i've got some uh, Limnophilia aromatica mini with the purple underside and the lime green on top that'll stand out. Here's another Crypt Nuri, uh, and it's just a beautiful one that I got this one from Lucas Bretts. Gotta love it. 
uh, more of the red tiger crypt spiralis um, and then we also have uh, another nuri we have um, this purple flame sword also there's beautiful red flame and uh, uh, you know this is called a purple night flame sword and it'll have a beautiful purple uh, section as it grows and then we've got Rotala Pearl, which, believe it or not, this is like six months old, and it's like three inches tall uh, with CO2. But uh, what are you going to do? Some things grow faster than others. Uh, other than that, I think uh, if you pardon the algae real quick, look how bad that is. Oh, my goodness, he's an animal. Uh, basically, back in here, uh, you've got some more Rotala that the tops of it have just turned this beautiful bright pink uh, that's probably the Rotala super reds or something along those lines I have at least a dozen species of Rotala growing all back throughout there so for me it's hard to keep up with which one is which unless I really baby it pamper it and get it into uh, ship shape this literally formed within two days, and the way I take care of it is I just simply do this. I'll need to dial in some new things, but I was staging this for uh, a photo uh, session and uh, let it get out of hand since I've been working and cleaning other tanks other than my own. But wanted to let you know that uh, these are some easy to find or at least yeah easy to find not always cheap but good solutions to add a little color to your tank it's interesting textures and stuff and I just wanted to share that you can also add things like red root floating plants and uh, mosaic plants but these are some mainstays in the hobby ranging from common to rare that have some nice color. So I hope you enjoy. Please like, comment which red or purple plants you like. Interesting colors. I wish they had more blue plants or really true yellow plants and really true white or black plants. That would be awesome. And I'm sure somebody's working on it as we speak. So I will talk to you guys next time. Thank you. Take care of yourself, your fish, and the people around you, and I will talk to you later. Much love, you guys. Go enjoy the sun if you have some, and enjoy the weekend, uh, regardless of the sunshine being there or not. All right, take care, guys. Talk to you next time.